Probably the only quirk that we've got is when this hammer is set, if you turn the safety on and then try and pull the trigger, the gun won't shoot, which is good, but when you turn the safety off, the gun actually fires when you release the safety because there's just enough play on the safety movement so that oh, the gun won't actually cock uh, when the safety is applied because the hammer can't go down, uh, the sear can't go down to recatch the hammer. So when that's down, if you actually pull the trigger, the gun won't shoot, but the ham the sear has actually released on the hammer, but not enough for the hammer to actually fire. Ah, so you didn't do it that time. Let's see if it's the same on this one. Oh wait, safety's not installed, but you can see what I mean, look. You can see in here the little yellow lever that's right on the edge of the diameter of the safety hole. When you pull the trigger, it moves ever so slightly. See that? See in the safety hole, you can see that in here. You can see the tr that's the bottom end of the sear moving. And then if this, so when you push the safety across, it just stops that going down to release the hammer. But you also can't cock the gun if the safety is on. See, because when you cock the gun, it has to push the sear all the way down just to recatch the hammer. It's, it's the same deal on this one though, you can't see it. Interesting little quirk, but nobody ever uses the safety on the KCO2 because if you push this too hard, it just pops out anyway because it's it's just a little bar with a ball detent in the bottom, which I immediately lost as soon as I took it apart and had to find another one. And a spring and it's literally just retained it's just retained in the trigger mech by these two o-rings on either end so literally if you push the safety too hard the ball detent slides all the way across and the thing just pops out anyway i've i've never i got out of the habit of using the safety on the kco2s very early on just because it's unreliable you saw how much how little movement is required on the tr on the sear to actually fire the gun. So if you want your KCO2 to be safe, just you just take the mag out, remove the gas supply. And that's that's the only real way. And, be, and everyone's always careful when putting the mags back in as well, because if the striker happens to be forward when you insert the mag, it will tap the valve a little bit and let some gas out. It won't fire a full power shot, but the BB will come out the end of the barrel. But you know, this is airsoft, we're all wearing eye pro when you've got mags in anyway. <clears throat> but tuning up the trigger to make it more sensitive does mean that the safety is is less effective. I mean the gun you saw here, this was this is cocked with a V1 sear and a V2 hammer in it, and when when the safety's on, the gun won't fire. So that's fine. But when you let the safety off, the the hammer releases. There's not a hell of a lot. I can't really do anything about that. It's just a really shit safety design. Anyway, um, so yeah, that was testing with the Fang trigger, and that's testing with the standard trigger. And they've both got V1 sears and V2 hammers in. You can see they've got a little number two. Uh, you can't see it because the lighting's terrible. There's a two written on both of these hammers. Uh, we're ready to go to production prototypes now because uh, these are all working as good as I can make them in 3D printing. I'm pretty sure if I put either of these in a gun, they would actually shoot, but they would not last very long because they're just made out of um, ABS. And they might last a while, actually. They are ABS at 100% infill, but still, you know, the hammers don't weigh anything. I should point out interesting point. This one has a standard hammer spring on a mag steel hammer guide rod. Um, and this one has the stand, all standard KJW parts, apart from the hammer spring itself is the mag 150% spring, but it's been cut down 
to just 30 mil long and it's it's pretty, it's almost the same power as the standard hammer spring and that wasn't done by me that was done by whoever we bought this this boneyard mech off you can see there's a b marked on the back because it's the shit one there's an a on this one because this one's the this like this one's the better one this this came out of uh, the gun one of the guns that we already had built uh, i think it might have been the dread gun uh, i can't remember now uh, the one that i'm going to put in the ak20 uh, not ak ar22 um chassis but yeah these really work really well you can see even with the standard trigger it's nice and light hardly any movement required resets every time this one bigger trigger wider it's got the adjustable over travel um they only really need it sit set to about four and a half mil screw sticking out the back but it's definitely lighter this one's this one's definitely lighter i don't know why it could it could just be this the way this fits together because the all the, mechanically this is supposed to be a clone of, of the standard trigger but it it just feels nicer it feels wider and uh, the over travel stops really nice as well you get used to applying very little pressure to the trigger because you don't feel that you have to pull it as far so you just give the slightest nudge with the tip of your finger Gorgeous. This this trigger definitely feels narrower on on the finger, and with without the over travel stop, it's you can move it further than is necessary compared to this one. But it's still nice and light. It's only a hell of a lot better than uh, the standard haul. I may have been sat here doing this uh, a, bit, a bit too long. Okay, hopefully next you see of these, they will be metal.